Sweet. So we've created a file. We've deferred the closing of that file. And now we're going to look at IO copy. So I could read that by just holding down command, clicking on it, and JetBrains. I should be switching to VS Code. <coughs> and, uh, and here's what copy does. If source implements the writer, cancel. Write to, cancel. Interface, the copy is implemented by calling source write to dist. Otherwise, if dist implements the read reform interface, the copy is implemented by calling the dist read from. Eh, that really doesn't tell me much. Let me see if there's something more over here. Package IO, copy. Ah, well, here's dist, writer, destination. Here's source, reader, written and error. So let's read it down here. All right, now that I'm seeing it with this first, I'm seeing what dist and source re references. And you notice that here, copy, dun, dun, dun. It seems like, oh, because there's all this up here, right? I didn't see this opening stuff. So that's all of it. So copy copies from source to destination. So it's going to take from source and copy it to destination until either end of file is reached on source. So hey, I came to the end of the file, or an error occurs. It returns the number of bytes written. So the number of bytes written, it returns it. And the first error encountered while copying, if any. If any. OK, cool. It, a successful copy returns error equals nil, not error equal end of file. Because copy is defined to read from source until end of file, it does not treat end of file from read as an error to be reported. If source implements the writer to interface, so if source implements the writer to interface, the copy is implemented by calling this function. Otherwise, if destination implements the reader from interface, the copy is implemented by calling Okay, so that's kind of like, I would have to do some reading and digging to understand that in more detail. And then they provide a little example. And here I have a function from the strings package, new reader and some string, which returns a string which implements the reader interface. And I'm going to put that in there. It implements the reader interface and copy to standard out, which implements the writer interface. And, uh, and then it prints to output that. We could see this at the playground by clicking that. Let me just go back here. Example, right click, open link in new tab, and play, run. And so it prints it out there. There's a couple of things going on here which are interesting to explore. This is just an introduction to copy. I like trying to keep these videos short. And, uh, and what we're going to explore in the next video is I really want you to become familiar with understanding the code and being able to look things up and, um, uh, yeah, understanding the packages, you know, because you being able to understand the stuff is going to teach you to fish on your own, teach you to code on your own without me here. Um, so, uh, so that's what we're going to explore in the next video. We're going to explore the writer interface, the reader interface, and look up what strings new reader does. But this was uh, IO copy, which is going to copy from here and put it to there, to the new file from source and put it to destination. Cool. Do you want to see what it's doing when it's all said and done? And then we'll explore it. So let me show you what it's doing when it's all said and done. We are right now in two. There's nothing in two right here, right? Watch this. You ready for some programmatic magic? Okay. Watch right here. It's going to run. It's going to run this code. We're right here in that folder. And when it runs, it's going to drop a new file right there. What's that file going to be called? Index.html. And now when I right click that and reveal in Finder, double click it, 
it opens in a browser window because it's an HTML file. And if I look at that page source, there's that code. Well, that's pretty cool, right? Like just using programming, I was able to dynamically create HTML page. And now if I was grabbing my data source from a database, I could just generate a ton of static pages just using that method. That's pretty cool. How many people think that's pretty cool? I think that's pretty cool. And uh, I have to tip my hat where I have to, I, uh, I just have to give a shout out to Caleb Doxy because he's the one who uh, schooled me hard and I got this uh, I got this um, approach to teaching this from him. So there's this guy, Caleb Doxy, and I really appreciate his teachings.